What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Margaret. I'm 25. I live in Arizona. I love all things health and fitness. I'm a Pilates instructor, personal trainer, and yoga teacher. And today I'm telling you my top tips on how to become a better Pilates instructor or fitness instructor, just kind of in general. <laughs> Tip number one, never settle. This tip is applicable not only in areas of fitness instruction, but also fitness instruction, but also like in your life in general. Let me fill in my eyebrows. With every single class that you teach, try and be better than the day before. With every single month that passes, every year that passes of you teaching Pilates or yoga or whatever, make sure that you are taking time to improve your classes and to further your um, education in the field that you are teaching in. Prioritize building a community. Take time out of your day and out of your class to get to know your clients, know their names, learn something personal about them, and like actually build a relationship with them. If you do that, you are more likely to have people come back to your classes and recommend you to other people. Um, another thing that goes with that is like, if you're taking classes in studio, take classes where you teach. I take classes at the studios that I teach at and I think that helps me because my clients see me in the classes and they know that I am not just like spewing out bullshit when I teach classes. Like this is stuff that I actually do in my own fitness routine. So when clients see me in a class, they say like, oh, okay, like she teaches because this is what she actually does in her own life. And I think that makes a big difference. Like it doesn't make sense to go to somebody's class that doesn't like practice what they preach. Take time to develop your style of teaching, to develop your personality while teaching. People find a lot of value in a class where you are able to explain um, what muscles are working. You're able to explain exercises at a, in an anatomical way or in a way that helps people relate that to their own life. If you can really see a client improving, tell them, take a second out of your day, take a second at the end of class to say, Hey, Susie, I saw today, like you took that progression. You did awesome. Like I said, this is the challenge option and you just went right into it. That was awesome. You're making a lot of progress and I can see it even if you can't. Those little affirmations for clients make a huge difference. And not only will that make them happy and excited to hear that their Pilates instructor or their fitness instructor solve their, a change in their body, it's gonna make them more excited to come back to your class because they know that you're watching them and you're seeing them improve and you like actually physically see it even if they don't. Ask for feedback whenever you can. You want to like have a class that people actually wanna to come to. You wanna take people's suggestions so that you can do exercises or have playlists that people actually wanna to listen to and that'll make people enjoy your class even more. Don't mind me, I'm just folding all my laundry. <laughs> Another good tip that I have, and this goes for people that are teaching on Zoom or just teaching virtually, maybe like pre-recorded classes, prioritize quality over quantity. So I know like I've been making workout videos on YouTube for about a year and it took me a long time to obviously invest into like a microphone and a nice camera. Having clear audio in a workout, whether it's on Zoom or pre-recorded, it makes a really big difference because you don't wanna be hearing the instructors like heavy breathing or hear all the background noise. Like if somebody is buying your on-demand workout or watching your pre-recorded workout on YouTube, they wanna have crystal clear audio and audio is the thing that I think matters most. When your clients come to you and ask for modifications, if you don't know the answer right then, tell them, I'm not sure right now, but the next time I see you, like we can talk and we'll go through it. Then you go home, you do the research, you fill in the blanks that you don't know so that you are able to help them in the next class.
don't be afraid to make mistakes. You're gonna trip up on your words when you're talking. You're gonna say, you know, the wrong right and left. You're gonna say the wrong body part. Do not let that trip you up. Do not apologize for saying the wrong thing because I'm gonna be honest with you, clients are only listening to about 50% of what you say. So if you were to repeat something three times, clients are gonna hear it once. So do not ever apologize for saying something incorrectly because I promise you no one's gonna notice. Be intentional with every direction that you give, every piece of instruction that you give, because you wanna minimize the amount of time that your clients are sitting there going, uh, okay, what next? You want things to move quickly and deliberately so people can get in, get out, get the most out of their workout that they can. Always be on time, always be on time. This one really just goes for like in-studio teaching, but if you are teaching a class at 6 a.m. in the morning, do not show up at 5.45. Show up at 5.30, give yourself all that extra time that you need to be able to set up the room and so that you're like prepared when people do start coming in. That's like one of my biggest pet peeves. Do not neglect your own health and safety. Take extra time out of your day to stretch, take extra time out of your day to actually go to a class or take a class online. It will make the biggest difference in like your own practice, but also just like in your general demeanor and with your general energy. I think as fitness instructors, we're always like, go, go, go. And we push ourselves to the max. So always take a second, reset, take a breath, take a bath, go for a walk, take that time for you because you're a human too. And you need to feel valued and special as well. Be very intentional about the words that you say in a class. <sighs> I know for me, if I have an instructor say, we're gonna do pulses to burn off those extra calories, I'm automatically not going to their class anymore. Never, no. Know what kind of instructor you are because it's going to um, inform all of your instructing decisions and the words that you say. No matter the day that you are having, you have to be able to switch off your negative emotions or anything that you are feeling and be able to be there for your clients. And sometimes that's a very difficult thing to do. And sometimes when you're not feeling your best, you have to be honest with yourself and be able to step away and get someone else to like sub your class because you have to protect your own energy before you can give energy to anyone else. Oh, what is this saying? It's like, you can't pour from an empty cup. Invest in yourself, invest in equipment, invest in trainings, invest in all those things that are going to make you a better instructor in the long run. Don't be shy about asking for help. If there's something going on in a studio setting or even in a Zoom setting and you think it could be done better or you had an issue with how something was done, don't be afraid to say something and ask people for help. Like your studio managers, your direct supervisors, they are there to help you. And this one's true for anyone in any type of job setting. You cannot be a one person show all the time. I know it feels like it, especially if you're a freelance fitness instructor, it feels like you're a one person show, but if you ask for help, people are gonna be willing to help you and they'll be able to help you figure it out. Stay organized. I write everything down in a notebook. I write everything down in my phone. I have everything on my like online calendar scheduling thing. Super important to stay organized in not only like a calendar type of way, but also in a uh, like fitness routine type of way. Schedule in your own workouts, schedule in all of your classes and write down all of the routines that you teach so that you know for the people that do come to your class, like every single day or three or four times a week, you know that they are getting a lot of variety in their class. Make sure you take time to make your classes accessible to beginners and those more advanced people that are coming to your class more consistently. Make sure that you know the modifications and progressions for just about every single exercise that you do, because there's always going to be a beginning, but there's always going to be a beginner in your class. There's always going to be a more advanced person in your class, and you should be able to tailor your classes to everybody. If you see somebody struggling, do not be afraid to get up in their business and say, "Hey, uh, I think you should try this instead." and you know, see if that helps them. I think that just about covers everything that I wanted to cover in this video. Remember, you guys are awesome. You can do anything you put your mind to and I'll see you guys in our next video.